and Marcus Camby, who's had another terrific season for head coach George Carl. How Gasol, what a difference he's made since being acquired from the Memphis Grizzlies. Vladimir Radmanovich starts up front with Lamar Odom, who's playing terrific basketball, and Derek Fisher has been one of the unsung heroes for Phil Jackson. So the Nuggets ready to go, but it wasn't easy getting to the Staples Center. With more on that, let's go to Michelle Tafoya. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Mike, you're right. They got quite a scare this morning. The bus carrying Marcus Camby, Eduardo Nahara, J.R. Smith, and others caught fire on the freeway on their way here to the Staples Center. Now, first they noticed the smoke, the bus pulled over. Then there was a small but loud explosion which sent the players running off the bus, dodging cars and seeking safety on the side of the freeway. No one was hurt and a second bus eventually picked up the stranded team members. One humorous footnote, Phil Jackson saw the scene on his drive here. He told me he slowed down, saw that everyone was safe and sped away again. So I guess all's fair in love and playoff basketball, Mike. Well, it's always difficult to get to the stable center. Usually it's traffic, but as you said, fortunately, nobody was injured. Well, Mark, when they were playing the finals with the Pacers, ran into unbelievable traffic during the finals game that one year. You guys, I think you got it here about 45 minutes before the game. Well, they love, they love their Lakers here, and they, they do some things to <laughs> make sure that they're in good shape. <laughs> well, they certainly do love their Lakers. It has been a great season with sellouts night after night here at the Staples Center, and the team has responded. They now get to open up in this best of seven series. Kenyon Martin just kind of flipped it up, hoping to draw a foul as the ball goes out of bounds. Still Denver ball with seven on the shot clock. Martin and the Nuggets this year on the road, 17 and 24. And again, we know they can score. And it's never a question, especially with guys like Anthony and Iverson. It's a foul call. Defensively, are they as bad as sometimes they seem, or are they a little bit better than we think? Well, because their offensive numbers are so high, some of their defense statistically, points given up will be high. Field goal percentage-wise, they're pretty good. Points per possession, they're pretty good. So they're not nearly as bad, but some games are just awful. Radmanovic breaks it up. Bryant pulls up and misfires. Odom with a nice save after Radmanovic. Kobe Bryant. I don't know what that was. Somehow it ends up in the hands of Carter. And a foul on Odom, who's in the wrong place at the wrong time. And if you look at the Nuggets defensively, Anthony Carter, Kenyon Martin, and Marcus Camby are defensive first players. They've got to make sure that Iverson and Carmelo Anthony bring an effort and a discipline. They're gambling steals type players. They've got to be more solid. Well, I think as a coaching staff, too, you have to demand accountability across the board, and that's how you complete a defensive unit. Offensive foul on Kenyon Martin. Trying to help out. There you see the, there you see the numbers for Denver. And again, because of the fast pace, they give up so many points, but they can certainly force those turnovers. Now, they've lost in the first round the last four years, but this is a much better team than we've seen the last several years, don't you think? Well, to me, this is a much better offensive team, but uh, I disagree with Coach because this is a poor defensive team. They have no commitment defensively because you look at the talent of this basketball team, they should be much better, and it points directly to their defensive intensity. Carmelo Anthony was had a fabulous offensive season, knocks that down. Of course, they'll say, now that it's the playoffs, we will focus on defense, but it doesn't really work that way. No, habits are built throughout the season, and they play two small guards to start the game. When you play two small guards, it's very difficult. Fisher for three. What a season Derek Fisher has had, his first year back with the Lakers. Of course, he's always a fan favorite when he began his career and won three rings, but he's played extremely well. Marcus Camby, who likes that shot, and is very effective. Lakers here at home, 30 and 11, as Kobe Bryant gets inside. Kenyon Martin is guarding him right now. That's as good a defender as Martin is. As Denver throws it away, that's a very difficult matchup for Martin. Well, that's asking him to do too much. It does not matter how good of a defender he is. There's no way in the world he's going to be able to stay in front of Kobe Bryant. Not only that, the commitment to pursue stops on the other side and allows Bryant to get to the rim uncontested. These teams played three times during the regular season. As we have a foul away from the ball, Lakers won all three. It was before the Pau Gasol trade, and they haven't played since oh, January 21st, so it's oh, a real good barometer. And Scarmelo Anthony picks up his first foul. The thing about playing Martin on Bryant is now Iverson has to guard Rodmanovich. Carmelo Anthony has to guard Odom. You put your two best offensive players in mismatched situations. 
And the foul is going to go against Radmanovic. Iverson trying to front them and got pushed to the back. And Vladimir Radmanovic picks up his second personal. So he's going to have to come out. And all you want from a guy, you understand, is a mismatch, but you want the guy to compete. That's a flop. Allen Iverson, but he works hard to get in front of Radmanovic. So Radmanovic sits, sits down. Luke Walton checks in. You see Kobe Bryant guarding Allen Iverson. Bill Jackson said the biggest fear again is that Iverson gets people in foul trouble. And in Martin, the bank shot won't go. I think the difference, too, you talk about George Carl and Phil Jackson. One guy is challenging his players, and, and Jackson saying, Oh, what a block from Camden. And Jackson saying to Bryant, You defend Allen Iverson. Accountability, and then you're putting pressure on him, as opposed to George Hall finding matchups to relax guys defensively. There's Camby who led the NBA in block shots for the third straight year. And Carmel Anthony, smooth jump shot, and Denver within one. Bryant. Now the Lakers like to run, and they play up tempo and can score as Walton gets it down low. This time, he's shielding away from Camby. But Phil Jackson says we don't want to get into that same pace. And it's easy to get caught up in that when you play Denver, correct? Well, the Lakers, like you said, Mike, great block by Bryant. And then Camby knocks it away down the other end. The Lakers are very efficient playing fast, and they also can slow it down and play in their triangle through the low post. And so, depending on who they're playing, you can control tempo by how you run your offense. Expect the Lakers to make multiple passes today. Anthony guarding Bryant and an offensive foul. A lot of whistles early. Kobe Bryant pushing off. That's the second offensive foul. The one thing Phil Jackson said before the game and talking to him is, hey, we can run. We feel comfortable running, but we, we don't want to run at Denver's pace. We want to control the pace. Allen Iverson gets inside. Kicks it back out. Carter, good pass. Camby likes the baseline jumper. Not that time. Here's Odom. Odom has been on a tear since the All-Star break as Carter pokes it away. Iverson gets a little help up after getting knocked to the ground, something you'll see throughout the afternoon. He's always on the floor. One of the great things about the triangle offense is its flexibility in allowing different players to post up. Rodmanovich got a post up earlier against Iverson, so too did Walton. Here he goes into the post again. Fisher left open. Nice little ball fake. And Odom keeps it alive. Kenyon Martin has the rebound. Now you mentioned the triangle offense. For those unfamiliar, as Carmelo Anthony misses, just a little quick explanation. What does the triangle offense mean? It means you really basically have five players involved. Odom, nice pass inside to Gasol. Five players involved where they're forming a triangle on the strong side of the floor with three players, two players on the weak side, and the ball and your cuts are dictated by how the defense guards you. So it's big on ball movement and player movement. Correct. Or you just give it to Kobe and let him go one on one, which ain't a bad part of the triangle either. <laughs> Iverson gets bumped and can't get it to fall, but he'll go to the line. Again, they're exploiting Iverson guarding Luke Walton. Easy paint catch. Great extra pass by Lamar Odom to the trailing. How you saw. That's one of the reasons here. The Lakers this year were third in the NBA in shooting, almost 48% as a team. As Iverson will go to the line. And how about Iverson? Once again, leads the NBA in minutes per game. He's done it seven times in his career. Now he's 32 years old now. This is his 12th year in the league. And every year you say, okay, he's got to slow down. And he just doesn't slow down. And he's not going to. You, you're just amazed at, at the way that this guy can continue to take a pounding night in and night out. Doesn't take a possession off. Phenomenal athlete and an incredible career. And it doesn't seem like he's going to stop anytime soon. The pass to Gasol. Couldn't handle it, but saves it. However, broken up. Another nice play from Odom. Off of Anthony, and it's still Laker ball with 10 on the shot clock. And I love guys like Iverson who played high school football. I think they have a different level of toughness. I've always been attracted to those guys who played football during high school. He was a quarterback in high school. Well, he's just a different guy. This league has never seen anybody quite like Allen Iverson. Odom kicks it out, Kobe Bryant. 
may have gotten away with a travel. Either way, it's a turnover on the 24-second violation. That was great effort by Kenyon Martin on the closeout, and I like what George Carl did, taking out Carter, putting in Cleaza so Iverson could guard Derek Fisher and wasn't mismatched. And I actually think their best lineup is with Allen Iverson playing the point guard position. Here's a guy that's a willing pass. And be off the dribble. And get it for Kenyon Martin. Walton stays up on Carmelo Anthony. Kobe Bryant already picking up his first. Now they switch Fisher on Iverson. Falling away. Puts it in. Bill Jackson called him. He said he's a remarkable athlete and said no one has ever been like him that he can remember that's played in this league. I can remember playing with the Pacers that we met 76ers as Jamal Odom. Oh, oh, oh. Anterior of the Nuggets defense. We met the Sixers about three, three, four years straight. You're playing Allen Iverson, you just wanted to make him a jump shooter. When he knocks down that jump shot, you can forget about defending. Anthony. His drive he stumbles a bit. Kenyon Martin, the line drive, knuckle ball. And Gasol, the rebound. And just like yesterday, I'd rather have Anthony in the post versus facing up on the wing where more help can get to him quicker. There's Walton. Nice feed inside. And Gasol flips it in. Lakers off to a strong start, 54% from the field. And George Martin will call his first timeout. And the Lakers ball. <laughs> Man, you talk about shying away from contact. Carl, though, led the team to a record of 50 and 32 as Anthony knocks down another. Oh, 50 man. wins most ever by a number eight seed, and it's the third best record in team history. You win 50 games and you have to face the Lakers in the opening round. Odom. Nice drive, took his time. And he grimaced after he fell down. A slight limp as he's coming up the floor. That shot way off the mark. Here comes Fisher. Walton guarded by Linus Clayson. Part of a pretty good Denver bench. Nice move for Walton. You like, you like the patience of Luke Walton on the block. Waits until all the traffic is gone and then picks his defensive guy apart. Hasn't been an easy year for Luke Walton. Injury's a big part of it. As Iverson misses, Walton tips it but right to Carmelo Anthony. Camby keeps it alive. Camby second in the NBA rebounding, but he stepped out of bounds and it's Laker ball as we send it over to Michelle. Well, I think George Carl probably disappointed right now. He's asked his players in the last time out to be more persistent and patient with their offense, to use the shot clock and not take quick shots. On defense, he said, everyone get a foot in the paint, help take away those easy bu buckets. And on offense, you saw it. They're still taking quick shots, guys. Right now shooting 36% from the field. One of the better shooting teams in the NBA. Walton has been aggressive. Gasol, nobody on him. Lead is up to 10. Right now, the Lakers are getting anything they want on the offensive end. Going through Luke Walton, the inside-outside attack, and getting good results. Lost it by Adrian Fisher. Lakers have not played since Tuesday. That was the final regular season game, so you can bet they've been itching to get back on the floor. And what they've reduced Denver to is a jump shooting team. And where Denver's greatest strength is getting to the free throw line and attacking the basket. And that's a point that Phil Jackson made prior to the game. The one thing they don't want is Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson getting to the foul. Odom couldn't handle it, but Gasol can. Eduardo Nahara in the game for Denver. He's guarding Kobe Bryant right now. Bryant for three. And there's Nahara, another one of the players in Denver who's a good defensive player. As Jeff mentioned, they got some guys individually are very good defensively. Fisher staying with Iverson. Nice feed inside and can be the finish. Iverson amongst the league leaders in assists as well as scoring. Well, he's an underrated passer. He's a playmaker. That time putting pressure on the defense and then finding can be underneath. Odom the jump shot. Can be tips it, lost it. Walton's done some nice things since coming off the bench. Bryant, nice feed. Pretty pass and Kyle Gasol with eight points in the early going. 
And that's what we talk about in the open. Is this Kobe Bryant's best season? Well, all around play. That time, an aggressive play with the sole mission to make a play for somebody else. Camby, nice move up and under. And Odom with the foul. And Marcus Camby. They go to the line after he goes to the bench. That's what you say to your great players. Well, we know you're a great player. Since playing five on eight right now in dummy offense <laughs> than the Denver Nuggets are giving. Now, your frustration with the Denver defense or lack of is it because they've got the ability, and as you mentioned, they've got some pretty good defensive players to do it. It's sometimes they just they just don't execute it at all. Well, I always think defense comes down to your best players committing to playing at both ends because if you really want to win and everyone says they want to win but if you really want to win you're going to guard because you can't rely on your offense to win it for you every night and that comes down to Carmelo Anthony and Allen Iverson. I agree with you it comes down to the players but it also comes down to the man in the suit the head coach demanding that you go out and execute defensively. There has to be accountability. It has to be preached every day, and then you go out on the floor and get it done. George Carl has, has been a defensive-minded coach in a good part of his career. He's coached five different teams to the playoffs and tries to get them to play defense, but sometimes it's easier said than done. He well, preaches it. Well, Jeff Van Gundy didn't try to get us to play defense when he was out coach. With all due respect, you demand it, and if you don't, then there's a price to be paid. Yeah, but the relationship that it's happened, you're scarred from that relationship for the rest of your life because of that. You're right, but I think I'm going to make it, though. <laughs> there you see five different teams to the playoffs, including a good Milwaukee Buck team. He also led a Seattle Supersonic team to the NBA Finals in 96. His team lost to Phil Jackson, Chicago Bulls that year. As Carmelo Anthony hits the first. Reminder to visit NBA.com. You can get ready for the 2008 playoffs at NBAStore.com. Find the best selection of team jerseys, hats, T-shirts, and more. NBAStore.com. Every team, one store. They're chanting DUI here at the Staples Center because of Carmelo Anthony and his recent arrest for driving under the influence. Anthony has apologized to the team, the franchise, the fans, his family. Said it was a great mistake, he knows, and is hopefully going to learn from it. Nothing like that will ever happen again. But the fans seizing upon the opportunity as Farmar misses. Ball tipped back out. He'll try it again. Won't go. Yeah, but that's low rent by the fans. That's like what you'd expect college kids to do. If you make a mistake in life, it's big enough to deal with the mistake that you've made, as everyone in this arena has made a mistake. To go after a guy about that, they're, they're better than that, Mark Jackson. <laughs> and I like the idea that Carmelo says, hey, I made a mistake, owned up to it, and, and says, I'm going to learn from it. That's what you're supposed to do. Bryant gets inside. Gasol is open. And can be with another rebound. Eight-point lead for the Lakers. Iverson bumped. And he'll go back to the line. But that's Nuggets offensive basketball, the last two possessions. Anthony posting and going to the basket. Allen Iverson in the open floor, not settling for the jump shot, crossing it over and going to the rim. He is murder in the transition game where you can't get your defense set and get that first help defender there. He's got too much off the dribble. And again, he gets to the foul line. He gets opponents in foul trouble. He had a 51-point game, his season high against the Lakers in a loss early this season back in December. I think if you're Allen Iverson, you're doing Jordan Farmer a, a, a favor if you pull up in transition and shoot a jump shot. You're taking the pressure off of him. That time, turning down the jumper, putting his foot on the gas. Bro. Now Lucky's Denver's got zone. zone, yeah. Which they played some, with varying degrees of success, but it does take away some movement. Odom misses ball last touched by Odom. In the NBA, though, it's hard to be successful defensively if you play zone for any long stretch. Depending on how you play it, I would agree, because most players, the number one reason it's not successful is most players don't believe in it. And they're not going to give you the same effort in a zone as you could coax out of them in a man-to-man. -man. I think whatever defense you're playing, the guys that's trying to execute it has to have a commitment to it. Iverson misses. Well, the battle for the boards has been pretty fierce. Farmar kicks it out to Walton. Farmar left open again. Puts it in. Three corner for Jordan Farmar, the 21 year old out of UCLA. They say a commitment to it. Jordan Farmer is a shooter coming in off the bench, an impact player. He's had three wide open looks. Not a 
Misfires. Iverson, the long rebound, puts it right back up and in. He's got six points. J.R. Smith set to check back in for Denver. Bryant misses. Anthony. Nice pass ahead to Klaza. Blocked from behind by Bryant. Iverson with a good hustle on the follow. Klaza felt he got hit. George Carl feels the same, yelling at official Mark Davis. About a six second difference between shot and game clock. Bryant kicks it out. Farmar, another three. Can be the rebound. Denver with plenty of time. Nice outlet pass. Beautiful feed from Camby. And the Nuggets within four. Right now, the Lakers, the team not getting back defensively. Kobe Bryant at the buzzer. Just short. And that will land. They have more of a bond than just father son. They both have had to deal with cancer recently. Kobe had it twice while he was in college at, Kobe, at uh, Boise State. As Allen Iverson makes the, the save. And then George had prostate cancer back in the summer of 2005. Both are doing very well. And it also got some very close together. Uh, Smith puts it in. They're going to count it. But it's been a wonderful relationship watching George. He's so proud of his son. And he doesn't play a heck of a lot. But he's very proud of him. And young Kobe says, and this was in ESPN in the magazine, a wonderful story about their relationship. He goes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk to my father during this series. I've learned everything about the game of basketball from him. Sometimes we want to be serious, but maybe he'll want us to get together. So he'll take his lead from dad. If you're George Carl, you're so proud of him. All he's been through, persevering, making as an undrafted free agent. I'm eating dinner with him every night. <laughs> How cool is that? Your son in the league, you're coaching against him. I can remember working the studio show with George Carl, and every single night he was concerned, wanted to watch his son play in college. Right, Monovich with Klaza up on him, and he stepped out of bounds. Of course, we got a couple of father sons with Luke Walton and his dad, Bill, who's still recovering from back problems. Get well, Bill. Luke always used to say, though, when when Dad used to do games and broadcast games, he was always killing me on the air. <laughs> Luke knows how all the other f the players feel. <laughs> this is Byers and Ronnie Turi have the rebound. One thing I'll say about this game, and we did the game yesterday, San Antonio Phoenix. When you have a team on the ropes, you have to bury them come playoff time. Right now, the Lakers are now in a dogfight, but they had the Nuggets where they want them and did not capitalize in the first quarter. Ball knocked out of bounds. Radmanovich will inbound. You know, that play right there just irritates me. The Lakers have one baseline out of bounds play, and J.R. Smith was caught unaware, like he had no idea what was coming. Well, that's the problem at times with Denver and with J.R. Smith. Three on one break. Lakers, Turiak inside. And Smith <laughs> absolutely bumped him. And he complains to Joey Crawford. Small play by Terry. Could have led the fast break instead. Got the ball into the hands of the point guard. Good read. And then Jordan Farmer, three on one fast break, makes the proper decision. Here you see one dribble, get it ahead, and then fill the lane. Does a good job of attacking. No question about it. Contact. And Terry off going to the line. First free throw attempt of the Lakers. He's a, my man Jeff's a little ornery this morning or this afternoon. You don't like these early starts? No, I'm fine. Back to back's got me a little cranky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get cheerful again. A little cranky is, is I mean, is that something new? <laughs> I'm not surprised at the cheap shots you continually <laughs> deliver to me. Now, yesterday I'm raving about him, and what does he do? What loyalty does he, loyalty does he show? Well, some people are uncomfortable with compliments, and they respond that way just because they don't know how to handle compliments. No, that's not true. I'm fair but firm. Our relationship remains the same. Fair but firm. <laughs> that sounds like a parenting book. <laughs> be a good title. Smith inside. Well, Smith can certainly get it done at this end of the floor. Can be explosive at times. In fact, he had a 40-point game this year. Klaza has had a 40-point game. So they've had two bench players with 40-point games. Then you had Iverson and Anthony have had 40-point games. That's four different guys on one team. And he has been on a shooting terror. 
Radmanovic, ball knocked loose. Eleven on the shot clock. Our NBA calendars tonight on TNT. Game ones: Philly of Detroit, Hawks, and the Celtics. Tuesday NBA TV: Toronto and Orlando. A game two, and the next Sunday on ABC: Cleveland and Washington, San Antonio and Phoenix. Those will be game fours. A big week of playoff action as Radmanovic misses. Kenyon Martin couldn't control it, and it's going to be Laker ball. And Kenyon Martin Wright had the rebound. Lamar Odom actually slapped it out of his hands. It should be Nuggets ball. Kenyon Martin, when he first came into the league with the Nets, was one of the premier defensive players in the game. Knee problems and some serious knee injuries have stopped it a little bit, but he can still defend. A physical player. Smith. Iverson draws the foul. And he'll shoot two. A very good basketball by J.R. Smith. He drove, he, first of all, he could have taken a contested three. He put it on the floor. He could have forced a shot in the paint. Came to a good stop, kicked it to Iverson, and then Iverson was able to drive the ball again and get to the free throw line. J.R. Smith, it's now his fourth year in the league as Iverson will shoot. Smith is one of those right out of high school to the NBA. First round pick back in 2004, second year with Denver. First two years with the Hornets. Again, he can score. Him and George Carl have butted heads because of Smith's sometimes lack of desire to play defense. I think you're talking about J.R. Smith. He should be in the conversation as far as sixth man of the year award because of his impact coming into the ball game off of George Carl's bench. And a tough kid because what you touched on. Had problems with George Carl, didn't hang his head, worked his tail off, and finds himself once again in the rotation. And he's a Jersey kid from Freehold, New Jersey. And as the Nuggets pull within two, two and a half gone by here in the second. Martin defending Brian, who pulls up, won't go. Turiaf, another offensive rebound, and he's fouled by Klaza. So Klaza picks up his first. And Kobe Bryant is just one of eight from the field. Take it out of bounds. And give Kenyon Martin credit because what he is doing is staying in front of Kobe Bryant, moving his feet and making Bryant a jump shoot. Turiaf. Hey! Martin, good boxing out of Bryant. And Martin doing a good job on Bryant. Plaza, he's got a limited range and nails the three pointer. And the Denver Nuggets with their first lead. Turi up, you have to understand, you're not guarding a normal power forward. You are guarding a guy that's a lethal, lethal jump shot. Turi out comes right back, but it rolls out. Nuggets look to push. Again, only Golden State scored more. Averaged almost 111 a game. Klaza, another three, puts it in. Back to back threes from Linus Klaza. And they're really sharing the ball well with this unit. The ball's hopping. No one's overhandling the basketball. This dude is coaching all over the place. A former ABA player as well. Gasol, short. But that's what the zone does. Even though that was an easy shot by Pau Gasol, it's not the same rhythm as man-to-man -man offense. Klaza gets the roll. When is Klaza? His third year in Missouri from Lithuania came to the United States at age 16, played a couple of years of college ball at Missouri. First round pick of Portland back in 2005. Gasol gets it back. Vujicic for three. It's good. Sasha Vujicic from downtown. We are watching a bunch of guys that come in off the bench and look to have an impact on the game on both ends of the floor. Glazer is trying to take over offense. And gets the bounce. And as Glazer does it again, he's capable of erupting. They tease him on the team because he seems to have his best games when it's on national television. Oh, good timing. <laughs> he's got the last 10 nugget points. Kobe Bryant. Way off the mark. Now one for nine. And the one thing Kenyon Martin and the zone have done is make Kobe Bryant a jump shooter so far. And Smith puts it in. And the Nuggets open up a seven-point lead. Oh, 
And off of the solid defensive contest of Kenyon Martin, pushed the ball up the floor. J.R. Smith putting pressure on the Lakers defense, gets the basket. He's going to the line for the possible three point play. Obi Bryan, his second foul. And Smith will now shoot one. And the addition to Smith's game, particularly in this first half, is instead of relying on the three point shot, is attacking the rim. 41-33. Nuggets have made six shots in a row. They're now shooting 50% from the field and on a 16-3 run. If you're the Lakers, you shouldn't be surprised that the Nuggets are playing a lot of zone. That's part of the strategy and, and part of the, the execution as far as trying to get stops defense. <laughs> Smith hits Gasol. And Gasol will shoot two. So two free throws coming up for the man that was traded from Memphis. Here's some of the West first round. Utah winning on the road in game one last night. And the other part, of course, San Antonio with that thrilling victory at home against Phoenix. And New Orleans coming from behind to beat Dallas on their home floor. Allen Iverson getting the rest early is Gasol, as we mentioned, since he was acquired, they're 22 and 5. When Biden went down with the injury back in January, it was a little scary situation for the Lakers, but Mitch Kupchak pulled off that amazing trade. Gasol has been just tremendous here in LA. Anthony spinning. Shot won't go. Nearly tipped in by Martin. And Anthony comes away with it. Plays him, no hesitation. <laughs> no chance either on that one. And here's why it's a bad shot on the opposite side. Wojcik's defending Carmelo Anthony. You got to look to exploit that. Walt misses. Anthony Carter will push it up the floor. J.R. Smith, nice move. Oh, pretty play from J.R. Smith. Truly, I did not know he had so much off the bounce. I thought he was much more just a stationary shooter. He's really done a good job creating separation with a couple of crossover dribbles. Gasol gets it deep and has an easy time that time. But how about Glazer and Smith? They each have 10 points, 20 bench points between the two of them. Martin spins, and they score after about three seconds went off the shot clock. You're the Lakers. You have to get back on the defensive end. Right now, the Nuggets are running off makes, all misses, putting so much pressure on the Lakers' transition deep. Kenny Martin continues to do a good, solid job on Kobe Bryant. Walton left open. Hits a three. That's an important shot right now. The Lakers have been struggling a bit the last couple of minutes. And the Nuggets are having to overhelp for Carmelo Anthony because Martin is on Bryant. Anthony is on Gasol. Ball deflected and stolen. Bryant to Fisher. Vujicic a three. Gasol tips it, but Carter right there. Carter, oh, nice play. A little hesitation. Looked like he was going to pull it back out and then hit the layup. And as much as we've been critical of the Nuggets defense, the Lakers defense right now is porous at best. Walt is fouled. I saw that lead slipping away. It was killing me. Now this guy going, well, I can't watch, I can't watch. And then I check him peeking at the score. Man, when, that, that, when they let Capono get those two threes in the third quarter to cut the lead, I'd try to come through the TV set. And Dwight Howard, he's had a remarkable year. He had a great first game. And he's going to have to be that dominant for them to be competitive against what I think is a better Toronto team. Right now, the Nuggets with a five-point lead, four and a half to play in the second, along with Jeff Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, and Michelle Tafoya. Mike Green on hand for game one of this best of seven opening round series. Kobe Bryant, he's seen a number of defenders, that time has some space. Kenyon Martin was up at him every step of the way. J.R. Smith gives him all that room and he knocks it down. Well, the difference, Kenyon Martin made him a jump shooter from above the three-point arc. That time, a rhythm jump shot inside the three-point arc is an easier shot for Bryant. He's now two for ten. 
Carmelo Anthony forces it up. Oh, top shot. There was contact with a wall. He just kept his hands straight up. Well, if you Phil Jackson during that timeout, you got to challenge your guys defensively. Three nugget players in double figures and Allen Iverson with nine. Odom with the finish. It was a tough catch. Fisher threw it behind him. But a superb athletic play. Odom's third field goal. Anthony. Quick shot won't go. Luke Walton getting a lot of minutes early. Fisher fires away. And over the backboard. And as Kenyon Martin's going to check back in. Iverson will as well. The thing you're most impressed about Lamar Odoms are one of the things is his hands, ability to catch the basketball and then finish. Can do so many things on the floor. And we said since Gasol came, Odom has been just superb. Can be the runner. Odom another rebound. He was seventh in the NBA in boards during the season. Odom coast to coast draws the foul as Carmelo Anthony picks up his second. That's one of the things, the luxury of having a 6'10 power forward that can get the rebound and also lead the fast break. Can be trusted in transition to make the right decision. Pushing the ball, waiting until the defense tells them what to do, splits in between, gets the contact. Marlo now in his ninth year in the league, his first four years also in L.A., but with the Clippers. As he misses that one, this is his fourth year with the Lakers. One of the most difficult decisions for a head coach is do you bring a star player back in like Carmelo Anthony and break up a unit that's going very well? They had a seven or eight point lead, Denver did, with Nahara, Martin, Clieza, Smith, and Iverson. When do you bring Carmelo Anthony back? He was brought back in, the lead has been cut, but you got to keep your stars in rhythm, but you hate to break up a successful lineup. Nuggets lead is one. Kobe Bryant on him. And that's Kobe Bryant's third foul. So two fouls on Kobe Bryant. This move, Phil Jackson leaving Kobe Bryant in the ball game with three fouls. I totally agree because he has the luxury of having Bryant defend a guy that's not an offensive threat in Anthony Carr. Nuggets, 7 of 13 from the free throw line. Kobe, by the way, has fouled out once this year. Iverson, one of two. He's missed four free throws, but Jackson has confidence in his star player. And I want to see that referee who called that sixth foul. <laughs> well, nice play. And a pretty pass from Gasol. Gasol has five assists, and that's what Kobe Bryant said was the biggest surprise about Gasol's game that he saw. Well, they're going through the post, and then again, they had the mismatch with Iverson guarding Rodman, I mean, Walton. It's the two biggest size mismatch to be effective. That's a three. Anthony Short, Fisher the rebound. Lakers went up by 10. Nuggets came back. Denver went up by eight. Lakers have come back. Gasol lines it up. Odom, the offensive rebound. Back to Gasol. Oh, and he puts it in. Nice adjustment in the air. I really think they need more size on the floor with J.R. Smith or Klaza. And with that, Klaza gets up off the bench, but Denver turns it over. They're sixth so far. Odom, nice feet again. Gasol takes his time. And a 6-0 run now by the Lakers. They're back up by four. And part of the problem with the rebound on interior defense is you have one of your best interior defenders defending Kobe Bryant on the perimeter. So he's eliminated. Iverson steps back and nails the three. 13 for Iverson. You give me Allen Iverson any day of the week. Arguably the greatest player pound for pound that this league has ever seen. Fisher, short. And can be the rebound. Iverson. Are you kidding? Hold on, Mark. <laughs> That's a ridiculous state. Ridiculous. Pound for pound. The, the man best is player in NBA history. See, you remix my sentence. Pound for pound. The guy is six foot, 160 pounds. 
He is in the discussion when you say pound for pound. No, no, you said arguably the greatest player in NBA history. Pound for no, pound. pound. Did you not pound. take right pound for pound? I don't care if it's kilo for kilo. <laughs> if he's not the best player in NBA history, are you kidding? You're not listening. How about I'm if he? Listening. How about if he changed it to best offensive player pound for pound? All right. A little better? No. The saw. How the saw? 18 points, seven rebounds, five assists. Don't forget, coming up at half, the T-Mobile halftime report. Lots to talk about as the playoffs underway. And the guys will have it back in the studio as we have the foul away from the ball. It's going to go against Derek Fisher, and for the Lakers, that's their 15 foul. Uh, Mark likes those boxing analogies, pound for pound. Well, hey, listen, I'm not diminishing what Allen Iverson has accomplished. His career has been Hall of Fame-like, but Michael Jordan? You're not listening. Sugar Ray Robinson wasn't a heavyweight, so he wouldn't beat Muhammad Ali. But people say pound for pound, he was arguably the best. Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? Obviously, I don't, because to me, you sound like an idiot saying it. You must think I'm sounding like an idiot. <laughs> Because I don't get it, but I don't get it. Because half the viewers agreeing with me and then the other half agreeing. <laughs> so you think we're, we're, we're both idiots. I'm surrounded by idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Iverson, meanwhile, four of eight from the line. He's 175 pounds, right. maybe, at six feet tall. He'll be that after he's been out of the league 10 years. He's not 108 by 150. Vujicic fires away. Odom, another rebound, and puts it in. Such a talented rebounder, his ninth here in the first half. I like the move by Phil Jackson, too, taking Kobe Bryant out of the ball game. But closing out your defense, you can't give up second shot opportunity. Odom's been great the way he's passed the ball, rebounded the ball, and defended in the first half. Good defense from Vujicic. That may have been deflected off Iverson's leg. Crowd wanted a backcourt. Nahara, blocked by Vujicic, and that will end. And either started J.R. Smith, Fulieza, or Nahara, somebody, so that there's more natural matchups. Carter right now on Radmanovic, who is 6'10". Gasol left open, Carter trying to harass him, and can be with a reach-in foul. So Carter picks up. And they're going to call it on Camby. First on Camby. It really shows you the advantage of the trade for Pau Gasol. Struggling Kobe Bryant, you now have another home run hitter that can score and take the pressure off. So Gasol knocks down the first. Pau Gasol was acquired back on February 1st in that trade that saw Kwame Brown, Javaris Crittenton, Aaron McKee. Pau's younger brother, Mark Gasol, is going to be a good player in two first round picks. And what a huge trade it was for Gasol who spent the first six years, six and a half years in Memphis with the Grizzlies. Just repeat those names, <laughs> please. I mean, I I just still don't get it. That sounded like he was trying to make it sound like it was a good trade. <laughs> oh, Ali, if Martin can't finish it, I'm just reporting the facts. It's a rebuilding trade for Memphis. Bryant lost it, gets it back, tough shot. Badger won't go, ball tipped out. Here comes Iverson. Carter with the jump shot. And Carmelo Anthony, the rebound, goes right back up. Offensive foul on Carmelo Anthony. That's his third. Odom draws the charge. Pursuit back on defense by the Lakers. You give up a second shot opportunity, but Lamar Odom back in the picture. Gets in position. Charge on Anthony. So Anthony, the only member of the Nuggets with three fouls. Bryant, the only member of the Lakers with three. We'll check that right. Monovich also has three. Anthony, nice little fake. Sometimes he makes it look so easy to score in so many different ways. He's an assassin on the offense. He really has the entire package. The ability to stretch the defense with his long ball shooting ability and then puts the ball on the floor and can also post. Easy shot, won't go, but Gasol right there for the follow. But again, because now Carter's matched up against Rodmanovich, Camby has to come over because of the huge size mismatch, which leaves Gasol free for the second shot. alley -oop. Can't get it to go, Gasol another rebound. Now Gasol in his first playoff game of the Lakers continuing to put up excellent numbers. Here's the mismatch. 
No double team. Radmanovic can't get it to fall. Odom. Odom. How good is he? Oh, he's scary good. He is absolutely scary good. There's nothing on the floor in basketball that he cannot do. One of the most versatile players in the NBA. There's the steal from Bryant. One man to beat. And Carter hard foul. Does a good job. Mark Davis gets in the middle. Will we have any technicals handed out? Carter initially tried to hold Kobe Bryant. And then he, I think, he thought that he got hit and then responded with a little bit of something in return. Now just tries to hold him. Then there's that shove at the end. You see him hold his left eye corner. He thought Kobe Bryant did something back at him. Well, he got hit with an elbow, but it wasn't intentional because of the momentum carrying him afterwards. Good hard foul by Anthony Carter, but loses his head on the contact from Bryant. So Carter gets hit with a technical foul. So first there'll be the technical free throw and then two on the personal foul. As Kobe Bryant, here's the MVP chance that he's heard all season long. First opening night, he didn't hear MVP chance. You see the swing back afterwards. The left arm was wide open and delivered the basketball on point. That was one of the best games I've ever seen in my time in the NBA. Well, what was so fun about it was guys were making shots. And there you see the two overtimes. Spurs coming back from nine down in the fourth quarter to force the first overtime coming down from five down in the first overtime to force the second one from your Phoenix you got to be kicking yourself because that's the game that you had in the back and you didn't win. Brian hits it but Jeff you always maintain no matter what happens in one game it's it's just completely forgotten as you go on correct there is no such thing as momentum either you just keep playing do the best you can make your adjustments and come out and you would hope if you're Phoenix to play with the same type of lead in game two Anthony Carter. That's a seven-point game. Denver, by the way, they're going to go home back to Denver before game two of this series. 2-2-1-1-1 two, two, one, one, one is the uh, format in the first several rounds. Of course, now in the first round, it's best of seven. It's best of five for so many years. And it's a good thing it's best of seven with all these great matchups. It'd be tough to watch some of these teams have a best of five. That was a great change by the NBA. Radmanovic will inbound. Fisher. The Nuggets once again going zone because Lakers trying to find Radmanovic on the post. Can be upset with that call. That's his third foul. Reminder of the NASCAR Nationwide Series back on ABC Saturday afternoon. The Aaron's 312 at Talladega. Coverage begins with NASCAR Cap Town at 2.30 Eastern. Dennis Klazer will come back into the game. And I'm gonna, I like this substitution because it's going to take, I believe, one of the smaller guards off the floor in Anthony Carter. And with Iverson and... No, I'm wrong. They're going to keep the small point guards? No, Carter's coming out. They're going to be down, they're minus 14 right now when they play Carter and Iverson together. So Carter will sit. The zone really worked for Denver in the first half. The Lakers, one of their worst losses of the season was a home loss to Memphis. And in that game, the Grizzlies played a lot of zone. Lakers pumped up 45 three-point attempts in that game and lost. So. There's been a little success zone defense-wise against the Lakers this year. Iverson, nice pass, but Camby throws up a wild shot. He thought he was fouled. Shot clock did not reset. Down to four. Anthony jump shot. Camby trying to touch pass to Klazer, and it goes out of bounds. And you look and you see Paul Gasol, that whole possession, extends Allen Iverson off the pick and roll, forces him to go wide, gets back into the paint, and then closes out and contests the jump shot of Carmelo Anthony. Pitch a perfect defense by Gasol. Brad Bonovich. Nice pass. Gasol in the largest lead of the game for the Lakers. That's their 19th assist. 
How about Pau Gasol? 26 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Iverson can't hit. Can be the rebound and throws it back off the glass. Fisher looking and right off the face of Anthony. And he's shaken up. Nice job from Fisher, one of the class acts in the league. You ever had that happen to you? A, a basketball hit you smack in the face. That hurts. Oh, what do you mean, nice job? He throws it off his face and put the hand on his back, and that's a nice job? It's a little gesture of sportsmanship. Oh, well, once again, we watched it in the first half, and then right now, out of bounds set underneath, a guy is able to come off, catch, and shoot. You got to know better than that. A 15 to 4 run right now. <laughs> do you ever stop? No, I'm just saying, like. So that's why those halftime pregame motivational things, you don't trust those things. Because it's about your habits. You can't, with your words, influence a team. They're going to do what they do. Anthony gets it to Martin. He gets fouled. And we send it over to Michelle. Well, in the last time out, here's what Carl told his team. He said, look, five, six turnovers here in the third quarter. Three offensive rebounds. Some of it's them, meaning the Lakers. Some of it's us. We've got to cut out the part that's us and get back to playing good bas basketball. All right, Michelle, Martin will shoot two. That last foul on Tom Gasol, who's first. Benny Martin missing the first. Martin playing a lot, most since he's been with the Nuggets. He played 71 games. This is his fourth year with Denver. Signed that huge $92 million deal after first four years with the New Jersey Nets. Up in the Nets to a couple of NBA Finals, but since he's been in Denver, it's all about knee problems. But he was healthy this year. And it brings him to within 12. He's done an excellent job on Kobe Bryant defensively. Bryant, short, can be another rebound. Kobe Bryant now 3 for 14 from the field, but his team is up by a dozen. I think offensively, Kobe Bryant seven. He has to put more pressure on Kenyon Martin. And defensively, the bad foul, fouling a jump shooter, picking up his foot. Uh, number four, as Mark says, so we'll see what Phil Jackson does here. What do you do here, Jeff? Do you leave him in? You're up by 12, so you got a little breathing room. I'm going to take him out. Go check Phil. Phil, it's time to take him out. I think one of the things you touched on yesterday when Shaquille O'Neal was in foul trouble, you have to be able to trust the guy on the floor. And Kobe Bryant is a guy that you can trust defensively that he's not going to pick up a ticky tack foul. Anthony hits the second. They've struggled at the line with just nine free throws, 11 of 20. So he stays in the game with the 11 point lead. Camby pokes it away. Good defense. Here's Klazer running the floor. Nice catch. And the finish. Linus Klazer really showing his ability. And he's got a dozen. At that time, Denver extending the defense. Carmelo Anthony picking up above the half-court mark. Denial on the wings. It's contagious in its aggressive approach. Bryant. Foul. Count it. And one. Kobe Bryant. Saying no way, no way, although Martin has done a fabulous job on it. Even that time he did well. This Kobe hit a tough shot. Now he looks to the crowd and says, don't worry about it, I got him. If you're a Laker fan, you trust when this guy says it. That time puts the ball on the floor, gets the contact from Martin, knocks down the basket, going to the line. Third foul on Kenny Martin. Rattles that one in, they're back up by 12. That's the number Kobe Bryant has. Anthony looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Martin, line drive, won't go. Clays of the rebound, and he's mauled by Odom. And Lamar Odom will pick up the personal. So Odom has two. Third team foul. They'll take it out of bounds. Phil Jackson 
And Kobe Bryant, their relationship once again has been good. They've had their ups and downs, but this year has been one of the best for both of them. As Allen Iverson comes up short, Odom the rebound. Pound for pound, Phil Jackson is the best coach in NBA history. <laughs> you can make that case. I know you've been sitting on that one. <laughs> Derek Fisher lines up. That's a two. Doesn't go. For those who didn't watch the first half, Mark Jackson saying Allen Iverson maybe the best pound-for-pound -pound player in the history of the game. Of course, disputed by his former coach. Hence the reference. <laughs> Anthony. Otto knocks it out of bounds. Now, Mark and I both feel pound-for-pound you're one of the, the best analysts in the history of broadcasting. Well, thank you. <laughs> Oh, you'll take that. You don't want to argue about that one, though. <laughs> trying to lose weight so it makes me pound for pound better than I was. <laughs> it's motivation to lose weight. You're 24. Hey. Anthony inside. Radmanovic got a piece of it. Camby. Martin the rebound. And a foul. And it's starting to get physical. Bill Jackson felt that the Nuggets are pushing off a bit. You know it's the playoffs. Phil stood more today than he has stood the whole year. Martin back to the line. Bill Jackson with certainly a realistic chance of his 10th NBA championship. As Martin hits the first one. Really, that's an incredible accomplishment to win six in Chicago and then come back and harness the talent that the Lakers had at that time with O'Neal and Bryant, win three more, and then come back here now again after O'Neal's left, rebuild again, and have the number one seeded team in the Uber Conference of the West. <laughs> the what <one> conference? <laughs> The what conference? Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> he even impressed himself. I hate like laughing. That. I hate laughing at my own jokes. That's a bad sign. <laughs> Kobe Bryant hits the jumper. The Lakers back up by 12. He's got 10 points here in the third. Iverson attacks. And he's bumped by Fisher. So Derek Fisher now with four fouls. Kobe Bryant has four fouls. He's very chatty right now. And you see Brian and, and Martin doing a lot of talking, but here's how smart he is. Catches the basketball inside the three-point arc, so therefore putting more pressure on Kenyon Martin and knocks down a baby jump shot. Now yeah. Martin has to close the airspace and not allow Brian to lift. Joey Crawford just warned a number of the players, let's be quiet. There's some chirping going on. Iverson, 5 for 11 from the free throw line. He shot 81% from the line this season, but he's really struggling today. More substitutions come in. Jordan Farmar will check in for Fisher. J.R. Smith has come on. But this is the type of attacking offense that George Carl was referencing at halftime is put your head down, get to the rim. They're spending their time at the free throw line, which is good. They've just got to convert their opportunities. With that one, Vujicic replaces Bryant. Coming up on five minutes remaining here in the third. Lakers impressive to start the half, much like they were in the first half before Denver turned it around. Now the saw blocked by Camby. Radmanovic hits a three. Off a terrific defensive play. The Lakers come back to capitalize. And this now the largest lead of the game that Iverson quickly makes it back to 12. He's a guy that has a history of silencing the crowd. Team needs a basket, put the ball in his hands, trust that he's going to make a play. Gasol, very aggressive from the start. And he's fouled in the act of shooting. Foul goes against Kenny Martin. Our NBA calendar for the playoffs, TNT Game 1, Philly and Detroit, Atlanta and Boston get starting on Turner and Tuesday on NBA TV. Game 2, Orlando trying to win two straight against Toronto. And then next Sunday on ABC, we'll have a couple of Game 4s, Cleveland at Washington, 
And then San Antonio at Phoenix GMC countdown beginning at all at 12.30 Eastern. Every night great playoff games on ABC, ESPN, TNT, and NBA TV. Now here's what I like. Jordan Falmont gets blown by by Allen Iverson dribble penetration. Phil Jackson says one thing. Kobe Bryant then gets off the bench and has a discussion with his point guard, telling him how to defend and not to have mental break. Out to Saul. Now 28-10, including eight grade from the line. Iverson. Here's, oh. what, here's what he told him. Tell Vujic to take it. <laughs> you don't need that. You don't need that stress of guarding Allen Iverson. Gasol. Vujic finds Odom. Odom. And then Stahara rolls off the rim. And Marcus Camby gets his seventh rebound. Iverson may have gotten away with the travel. Lakers bench certainly thought that. Nice feed to Klazer. Dennis Klazer really having a strong game. 14 points off the bench. Once again, the ability of Allen Iverson to be a playmaker. It's not about his scoring. He puts so much pressure on your defense when he has the basketball in his hands. That time, Klazer with the wide open dunk. Iverson ninth in the league in assists during the regular season. Vujicic on the drive. Farmar. Shot clock winding down, another pretty pass, and Paul Gasol has 30 points in his first Laker playoff game. Outstanding passing basketball team, unselfish top to bottom. 21 assists for the Lakers, and we still have three minutes to go in the third. Odom on Iverson. Pass to Camby, up and under. That's a tough shot. Gasol running the floor. And the Lakers go up by 14. Timeout, Nuggets. A playoff. Pau Gasol is on a great Laker team surrounded by multifaceted players. He's got a chance today to get his first playoff win. J.R. Smith trying to force it in. He was double teamed, and Odom picks it off. Odom running the floor. Oh, Odom gets knocked to the ground, but hits the layup, and it's 16 now for the Lakers. That's 6'10", going coast to coast like a point guard. Iverson. That's a three-pointer. In and out. Last touch by Canby, Laker ball. The last guy to do this around here was right-handed, and he was 6'9", and a legit point guard, but Lamar Odom gets the loose ball, pushes in, transi in transition. Nobody stops the basketball. No nugget loads to the ball, and Kobe Bryant enjoying his ball. Odom, 13 and 13. Vujicic lost it out of bounds. The last player of his size to handle the ball like that on the break and be able to make plays off the dribble with Tony Kukul. And to me, why he's superior is because Lamar Odom rebounds and can defend along with scoring the ball in the post and making plays off the dribble. Klazer finds an opening. Smith can't hit the three, and it's out of bounds. Odom, it's, his name's been a trade move as it seems every year, no matter what team he's been with. The reason why is because you can take a guy like that for granted. You don't understand the impact that he has on the ball game, the things that he does, and the pressure he puts on an opposing team trying to, to, to figure out the Lakers in the ball. Vujicic doubled. The song broken up nicely by Klazer. Klazer powers to the basket and out. Lennis Klazer playing superbly. He's got 16 points off the bench. Catches Pau Gasol backtracking defensively. He's not a guy that's just going to pull up on the break. Puts pressure against Gasol, gets the contact and the hoop. Klazer learned how to play the game at the Sharunas Marshallonis Basketball School back in Lithuania. Remember Marshallonis? They're talking about a strong, tough guy. 
a former teammate of mine and a great player, very similar to Mano Ginobili. But Ginobili has a better ability at handling the ball. Radmanovic, another nice pass. Pau Gasol having a field day. 34 points in his playoff debut with the Lakers. This is like room service for Pau Gasol. The ball's being brought to him right at the rim. Gets another rebound. He's one of those players just plays with passion, Gasol. I think if he was with Memphis and he got 30-something points, it would be off of post-ups and isolations. His plays, he is getting these numbers off of other guys making plays for him. Radmanovic for three. And the Lakers blowing out the Nuggets here in the third quarter. About a five-second difference between the shot clock and game clock. 36 points here in the period for the Lakers. Iverson plays it for three. Hits that one. Boy, he's come to play this afternoon. Breakdown defensively from the Maul Odoms. You got to stay at home on the shoot. Final seconds of what's been impressive third quarter. Odom, Farmar, it's a three. Bang! At the buzzer! All right, Jeff, if you're Denver, what's the uh, strategy? How do you get yourself back in the game? Well, I'm not sure you're going to get back in this one, but I think what you just want to do is build a base so you can have something to build on going into game two. I saw the rebound. Is that, is that how you tell you, what, like, what do you tell your team during a game like this? No, I think it's too know. early to, to talk about that with your team. What you basically want to do is just have good possessions at both ends. Smith banks it in. Again, with this Denver team, they can score points in a hurry as well as anybody in the league. Exactly, and that's why you just try to have good possessions. Walk, oh, hard foul. Smith, that might be a flagrant. He came down on him. Walton's looking for it. Mark Davis hasn't signaled it yet. That might be the first flagrant foul where I see the defender both foul and get the worst of it. Yep, flagrant foul. Flagrant one. So two shots and the ball. And the right call made, but I like that J.R. Smith gets up, goes over to Luke Walton and asks, are you okay? Hard foul, playoff basketball. But more importantly, you don't want to hurt anybody. Luke Walton should be asking him if he's okay. <laughs> he took the brunt of it. So Walton gets two and the ball. You know, they have rules in the NBA about flagrant points. You get possible suspension. You start the new both with technicals and flagrant fouls and flagrant points in the playoffs before there's any suspension. NBA playoffs, you're allowed three points on the fourth flagrant point. You're suspended. Oh, yes. Side ball. Bad pass that time. Here comes Iverson. Plays up. And there's a hard foul from Walton down the other end. Walton says to Clay's eight. No harm. Well, that's just a regular personal foul. I really like Clay's coming off the bench. The guy has an edge to himself. A little swagger and bounce to his game. Tremendous belief. Comes off the floor, enters the ball game like he's a star. Now he's only 23 years old. 6'8", 245, can run, can shoot with range. He's really come into his own this year. As we mentioned, he's had some big games, including a career-high 41. Another one of the very good players from Lithuania. We've seen Lithuania have good national teams in the Olympics. High school in Maryland, as we mentioned earlier, came from Lithuania at age 16, moved to the United States. These guys learn like four languages and speak them so well. That's the amazing thing. Kobe Bryant and plays of the rebound. So 21 points for Klazer. But his team down by 17. Just over a minute gone by here in the fourth. He's going right to the hole. Another strong move. What if he can say, you can't stop me all four of them? <laughs> He's showing it right now. Or I'm going to drive right every time until you take away my right hand. Here's the double on Brian. 
Sal strip but foul not her off. Got him on the arm. Uh, NBA playoffs on ESPN and ESPN 2 continue Friday more first round action. 7 Eastern on ESPN 2 game 3 Detroit at Philadelphia 8 Eastern on ESPN New Orleans at Dallas. That's a game 3 same thing for San Antonio at Phoenix 1030 Eastern. Kobe Bryant tough shot. Gasol the rebound and Nahara snatches up. A rare miss for Gasol who's 13 for 18 from the field. And a foul. Mark Davis called a foul on Vujicic that's his third. So they will take it out of bounds. Now Gasol see the numbers again the most important number for him. 22 and 5. That's the record when he played with the Lakers after the trade. And again, especially with Bynum being out in the injury. So huge. Bynum not expected to play in the first round after the knee injury. Uh, as Anthony's called for a foul. He might not play at all in the playoffs, trying to work himself back from that January injury and surgery. Also, the Lakers without Trevor Ariza, who was a part of their rotation. He's been out for a long time with a broken foot. He may play in the series. As Anthony will go to the line. You want Denver also, they've got an injured play. Mene is out with a groin injury. So it's one of their key front court players, but he's been hurt all season long. It's only a 14 point game. If you're George Call, there are some things that you can show your team, win, lose, or draw after this ball game, that you can be effective playing against the Lakers. Anytime they were aggressive and didn't settle offensively, they got good stuff. And then defensively, limit the mistakes and just battle, just compete on the defensive end. Eight to two start for Denver, and it's only taken them two minutes to slice six points off the lead. Poked away by Smith. Kobe Bryant left-handed can't get it to fall quick outlet here comes Iverson watch him go right at Farmar can't get it to go and Gasol lost it Smith lost it to Farmar ahead to Walton and Walton with an easy two that should have been two points for Denver and a big four-point swing and that should have been a contest and a foul by Carmelo Anthony at the other end just like J.R. Smith did top shot Iverson over the seven-foot Pau Gasol. Iverson with 21. Offensive foul on Gasol. No. Jeff says no. Mark says nada. That wasn't for a plays language. <laughs> <laughs> a foul call. I believe it's on Nahara. Why would a Lithuanian kid learn German? Are they bordering countries? <laughs> You're asking me geography, which I did not do well. I'm glad you looked at him instead of me. <laughs> well, that's like, have you ever tried that game, uh, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? If that's what fifth graders know. It's a lot different today. Boy, I need to move down to like, I don't know what a kindergartner knows. I have a fifth grader and I can't do his math. Walton. Gasol. Anthony blocked that one. Three on two. Smith. Banks it in and a foul. And it's an 11 point game. They have slowly chipped away. I think if you're George Call, you have to find a way to get more minutes for Blazer and Smith. The way that they have played all game long, not just the first half, but the second half, putting so much pressure on the Lakers defenders and really playing with a bunch of energy. You know, it likens to yesterday where Greg Popovich. First half played Jock on a few minutes and then took him out and put more offensive players on the floor so that everybody had to be guarded. More size. I think the Nuggets could benefit in the same way that you're talking about. And the Nuggets have sliced a 19 point lead earlier in this period. It started after three. It was Lakers by 19. It's down to 10. And you could think, okay, taking out Anthony Carr, I'm losing something defensively. Well, you ask Smith and Klazer to step it up and compete defensively. Nahara Arichin. For the Nuggets, that's their fourth team foul already. 8.06 remaining. 
know, you're talking about Smith. Look at the finish. He has to avoid the contact with Kobe Bryant, the contest of Jordan Farmer, able to just hang in the air until Farmer gets down and then off the glass. I love that super, super slow mo. Kobe Bryant hits a three. Bryant from downtown, his first three pointer. And it's back to 13. That's a big bucket. A great scorers aren't effective. He doesn't believe I'm ice cold. I've been struggling all game long. No, it's the next possession, and it's the next big shot. J.R. Smith. Iverson, a little fancy, hits a shot. Adlin <laughs> Iverson. He's got 23. And you can't play better defense than Vujicic just, just did against Allen Iverson. Just better offense. Trying to get the steal there, but last touched it. Gasol having just a brilliant game. Bryant gets inside, adjusts and banks it in. So tough to defend. The great teams that do it every single day in practice and all season long, when they summon something and say, we need to stop, they get it done. If you don't do it all year long, there's no way you're going to do it in the playoffs. Anthony the rebound, and no shot foul on the floor. It might be against Kobe Bryant. And if it is, yeah, that's five on Kobe Bryant with still seven minutes remaining. Do you take a chance of taking him out now? Well, he's taking him out, I think, for Lamar Odom, but I definitely get Odom back in the game. Bryant with his fifth foul will sit. His team up by 13 and still plenty of time remaining. He's come alive in the second half after struggling shooting in the first half. Here I'm here trying to yell at Joey, meaning Joey Crawford, who made the call. But Joey wasn't listening. There's Joey Crawford. This is his 267th playoff game he's officiated. And the angrier he gets, the more he tilts his head. <laughs> so he, he got that head tilt. That means I'm not listening to you. One of the great officials now in his 31st year. And I love that sneer he's got. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure you loved it when he was reffing your games. The only guy to ever eject me. Vujicic hits a three. Big three-pointer from Sasha Vujicic. He's had his best season of his young NBA career. As a defense, you relax, taking Kobe Bryant on the bench. But you still have to stay at home with these shooters with the Lakers inserting the ball. Lamar Odom. Again, you've seen it before, he's hobbling up, he's grimacing in a slight limp. Farmar throws it, but deflected. Couldn't tell what was bothering him, whether it's a knee or... But he's hurting. Well, we saw Lamar Odom limp off the court. Uh, Gary Vitti, their athletic trainer, told me he just bumped his knee and he's fine. You see he's back in there, guys. Thanks, Michelle. Gasol's pass. Uh, Smith got fouled by Vujicic, and the Lakers in the penalty. Four on Vujicic. So, there's going to be a lot of free throws down the stretch of this one. Both teams in the bonus. And Mike, we'd be remiss as a broadcasting team if we didn't acknowledge Jack Nicholson's 71st birthday. I was reading my Us magazine on the plane last <laughs> night. He's going to be 71 this coming week. <laughs> Any other gossip tidbits? No, no. I, I just said, I think, you know, we show him. Let's wish him a happy birthday. 71. He looks great. I want to know, do you, Us Magazine, do you get that delivered to home or do you buy that at the magazine? Buy that. Okay. I buy that, yeah. Happy birthday, Jack. You've been pretty calm today. You know, he's one of the guys, I used to stand, but I would never stand in front of him. Too much respect. I'd always squat down in front of him. Didn't want to block the sight lines. Did he ever talk to you? Oh, yeah. I was so nervous when he'd speak to me. <laughs> Just to think he would know my name. Coming up with the midway point of the fourth. Nuggets have made some runs here, but the Lakers still with some breathing room. Odom fouled. Carmelo Anthony picks up his fourth. 
Anthony 21 points and 10 rebounds. Again, continues to play well offensively, but for him and the Nuggets to take that next step, he has to improve his defense, right? Well, you have to also take it personal and realize, okay, the Lakers needed a basket, and they decided to run a set play posting up Lamar Odom against me on the weak side. You have to say, okay, they're going at me. I'm going to step it up. I'm going to get a stop. It's a challenge, and all of a sudden when your leaders do it, it becomes contagious, and it goes throughout the team. And your best player sets the tone always. And if he defends, your team will defend. If he is inconsistent in his defensive intensity, concentration, and preparation, his teammates will follow that as well. And so he has a much bigger responsibility. With, with the pay comes more responsibility. Ball and over the backboard, Odom misses both free throws. But those are things you drill every single day. You, you put him in position every single day in practice where he gets into the right habits and everybody understands what's demanded of you. So it's not just the player, it's the entire organization, the coach is off. Fisher knocks it away. Anthony, 7 of 19 from the field, contested nicely by Gasol, gets his own rebound, draws the foul. And Anthony gets knocked down. Now, this is what the Nuggets want. Score with the clock stopped. And it's Gasol picks up his third. But right there, he made a bad play. He drove the ball hard. Help came. Chiesa, a great spot up shooter, is standing wide open in the corner. The ball has to be kicked. Your best players have got to set a defensive tone and an unselfish tone. And you can't get into this, I'm going to go back at him so much that you make the wrong basketball play. This is another free throw for the Denver Nuggets. Here he comes off a pick and roll. Help comes. There's Clieza standing wide open. And if I butcher one more foreign player's name, I am going to absolutely, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have to say Clieza, Clieza, Vujicic. I'm sorry. For all our international viewers, I am sorry. I apologize profusely. It's a big man who apologize. I'm just happy that you have Jackson down pat. <laughs> right? <laughs> Smith. Thank goodness for J.R. Smith. 109-96, 13-point game, five and a half to play. Kick ball by Martin. I got that one. Beckham. Here's your kick ball analogy. No, I was saying foreign. Oh. Foreign player. 2-2 oh. versus the Houston Dynamo yesterday. <laughs> Don't be trying inside. You do a lot of reading. J.R. Smith picks up the first one. And that's number four. So free throws again. Both teams in the penalty. And here come the MVP chance. It's really come down to listen to most people talk. It's either Brian or Chris Paul and Kevin Garnett. Is Brian hits the first to remind her television's biggest drama back with an all-new episode. All-new Grey's Anatomy, Thursday at 9, 8 Central, followed by a new Lost, only on ABC. Tell you what, if I was a Dallas Mavericks, I would have turned the volume down just when you said Chris Paul. I'd still be scared. Talk about <laughs> the clinic he put on against that team in game one. Absolute enjoyment to watch. First playoff game ever for the young man. What a performance. Carmelo Anthony, he's got 24. Nuggets stay within striking distance as the clock ticks away here in the fourth. Odom to the basket, blocked out of bounds. So, you know, inbound. That was Paul in the game one victory in New Orleans. Unbelievable. Has an edge about himself, believes he's the best player on the floor every single night and is a true leader. This was let that one play. Kobe Bryant, way off. And seven for 23 from the field. I just think he's settling too much. He's a guy that can knock down the jump shot, but you have Kenyon Martin defending. You have to be aggressive. Anthony in and out. Gasol with his 14th rebound. The Lakers will take their time on each possession. Ryan on the drive, stripped, and a reach-in foul by Smith. 
Did you see the adjustment? Didn't try to think about shooting a jump shot that time. Took it personal. Realized his team needed a basket. Aggressive move to the hoop. Gets the contact. And then you establish a rhythm by going to the foul line. That's what all great scorers do. Bryant and Kenyon Martin chatting. We're going to have double technicals. Mark Davis watching it. The two of them kind of taunting each other. So double technicals. Bryant still looking at Martin. Yeah, yeah. who's still talking back. Oh, and what are you thinking about? The officials are looking right at you. You get a hit the second technical, you're gone. And also for Kobe Bryant, he's got to think long term. You can't take technical fouls because in the playoffs, even though he starts a new, you know, if you're thinking about going all the way, you do not want to get unnecessary technical fouls. On the seventh technical in the playoffs, you're suspended. Bryant had 15 during the regular season. On the 16th, he would have been suspended. Again, you start new in the playoffs, but if you start racking up double technicals, you got to be careful. 112-98, Iverson lays it in. 25 for Iverson. That's bad defense allowing Allen Iverson off pick and roll just to get all the way to the cup. Help has to come and you have to contest. Bryant wide open. But J.R. Smith gives him all the room. That corner on the screen, but that's too easy. Well, it's hard because when Kenyon Martin is on Bryant, then some smaller player has to play Gasol. So now Martin's playing Gasol and J.R. Smith is on Bryant. Iverson come right back, but for the Nuggets exchanging baskets, it won't do. I might try Klaza on him because a little bit more size, space him, try to have a cushion. Martin now on Gasol, bad pass. Anthony that time, good defense. Iverson tries to draw contact, he does, and puts it in. He does that as well as anybody in the NBA, and he makes it a 10-point game with a free throw coming up. What a smart play. Takes it to the body of the bigger Ratmanovich, eliminates the shot-blocking ability, Takes the hit, gets the basket. Unbelievable strength and a big time score. And that's a half hearted effort by Rodmanovich. You got to sprint back and make a legitimate effort to either get in front and take a charge or go up and block a shot. Don't play like the game is over. Now Iverson hits, now has 30. That's his career playoff average 30 points a game in the postseason. Nine point game, just under three and a half remaining. Kobe Bryant draws the foul on Smith, got him up in the air, and J.R. Smith is just fouled out. Well, that's how you talk back. You don't need to say anything. If you're Kobe Bryant, let your game do the speaking. We we'll watch LeBron James against Deshaun Stevenson and the Wizards. Go out and play and let your game do the speaking for you. This time, Kobe Bryant on the isolation. Unbelievable job of selling the shot fake, getting Smith in the air, takes the hit, and goes to the line. Enough said. Smith fouls out for the first time this season. Ryan to the line where he's 7 of 8. Lakers 21 of 26. Well, as we went to that shot, the only guy that the Nuggets have that has a chance of defending Kobe Bryant is Stacey Ogden, the assistant coach. <laughs> Unbelievable defender, limp, can test shots, and would stay in front. You saw Ogden's face right behind J.R. Smith. Bummer UNLV star. A lot of years with the Atlanta Hawks. Coming up on three minutes remaining. 11 point game. Kobe Bryant talking defense. Anthony gets inside and gets the roll. 26 points, 11 rebounds for Kamalo Anthony. Once again, it boils down to the Nuggets. It's about getting stops. You've shown that you can score. It's about getting stops when it's game-winning time defense. Kobe Bryant yelling, Brad Monovich, get out of the way. I've got Anthony Carter on the alley. A pass and a slam! Spot the mismatch and take advantage. 31st assist of the game for the Lakers. Iverson. And how about Pau Gasol? 34 points, 15 rebounds, and 8 assists. Bryant taking his time, and a reach-in foul on Carter. 
So Kobe Bryant will shoot more. Well, one of the greatest. Person. This play on the drive, he thought he got fouled before the shot. Now watch, after he misses it, he's going to yell at Kenny Mauer as he runs up the floor. Points at him. Points at him. Mauer hearing it. And then as the play continues, and after the Lakers went down, he continued to argue, and Kenny Mauer hit him with two technical fouls. There's the foul call against Denver. And Allen Iverson still goes out Mauer. There's technical number one. Kept going. And something else to say. There's technical number two. You're done for the day. So Bryant will shoot two technical free throws here. And then in the penalty. When I think of I'm Allen Iverson, I'm not concerned about getting seven technical fouls and being suspended because the way that my team is playing defense, I'm not going to be around too much long in this postseason. Well, Kobe Bryant will shoot four in a row. And he's got 30 points. 11 of them coming from the free throw line. Well, the Nuggets made a run as the Lakers led by 19 to start the fourth quarter. Denver came out in the first couple of minutes of the fourth playing well, cut it to 10, actually cut it to 9 at one point. But then the Lakers hit some big threes. Well, if you go on the road and you're going to score about 113, 114 points in a game, you've got to think you're going to win the game. And so if you have that offensive capability, all you have to do is put a little bit more effort into it, be a little bit more disciplined individually and as a team, be a little bit more committed, try to cut, shave 10, 12, 14 points off. You can't be giving up what they're going to give up now, 130 points in the game. Kobe Bryant has the last 13 points for the L.A. Lakers. Carmelo Anthony knocks it down. Right, by the way, with 18 points here in this fourth quarter, 122-109, Lakers comfortably in front. They've led the entire second half. Kobe Bryant at that time, Anthony the rebound. Lakers come in, the number one seed in the Western Conference. Anthony gets inside, that won't go. Nahara blocked by Gasol. Although the number one seed hasn't made it to the finals, on either conference since 2003. The Spurs did it back then. That's not a prediction by you, is it? No. <laughs> no, it's a fact. Kobe Bryant's going to get a big ovation here. Vujicic comes in. Bill Jackson giving him the chance for the ovation. On the inbounds, Carmelo Anthony slams home the follow. 30 points for Anthony, 30 points for Iverson, but they give up 122. Well, this game belonged to Paul Gasol. A spectacular performance from the Spaniard. Vujicic to Odom Gasol. A playoff career high, 36 points for Gasol to go along with 15 boards and 8 assists. What a great game for Paul Gasol. And also, Lamar, if you talk about his presence on the floor, that's a big man making an unselfish play. Another touch pass to Gasol. Alley up to Odom! And there's the exclamation point for the Lakers. Their 33rd assist. Great unselfish play from Los Angeles as Nahara hits a three. At some point, the Denver Nuggets have to realize you got to get it defensively. It's too late this year, in my opinion, because they've done all season long a halfway approach defensively. You keep on doing what you're doing, you're going to continue to get what you get. A standing ovation here at the Staples Center. Odom hits it. Remember the Lakers, their playoffs the last three years, first round loss, first round loss, and didn't even make the postseason the year before. Now they enter this one with a chance to win another championship. And we're a long way away as Gasol grabs another rebound. And fittingly, now Gasol finishing it up. Impressive performance by the Lakers as they take game one.